Social media bosses could face jail if they repeatedly fail to protect children from online harm. Now that's under new changes to the online safety bill. The Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, agreed to calls for tougher punishments as part of the legislation after his own backbench MPs prepared to vote against the bill. Let's speak now to Miriam Cates, Conservative MP for Peniston and Stocksbridge. She's one of the Conservative MPs who is backing the amendments on the bill. Really good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Uh, have you got what you wanted then? Um, yes, we have. But can I just correct um, from your opening statement? We were never intending to vote against the bill. We fully support the bill. We, we think the online safety bill is very much needed. Uh, we wanted to strengthen the bill, and that's why we brought this amendment. But we are fully in support of the bill itself. Um, but yes, we absolutely have got what we were looking for. Uh, essentially, we were looking, for, to, looking to introduce a link between uh, directors, senior managers, uh, and a criminal, potentially a criminal punishment for failing in their child safety duties. And that is what the government has committed to do in the Lords. It's a high bar, though, isn't it? I mean, there might be evidence of harm, but let's say the boss, the directors, the senior managers you mentioned says, look, I, I didn't. I didn't connive, I didn't consent to this content. There's nothing much can be done then, is there? Well, if they haven't connived or consented, then they won't be guilty of, a, of an offence. Um, and we're very clear, we're not trying to uh, capture people who have acted in good faith. Uh, we are trying to uh, insert a deterrent and a potential punishment for directors and senior management who have knowingly uh, contravened their child safety duties and knowingly failed to comply uh, with any notices that Ofcom um, might, uh, might uh, serve to them. So a good example of why this is so necessary is in the, in the tragic case of Molly Russell, who, um, who took her own life following... Um, seeing some appalling self-harm material um, on Instagram and Pinterest. In the inquest, um, Instagram executives made clear that they knew that these algorithms were pushing self-harm material to vulnerable children. And they even defended the material. Um, and it's very clear that without the kind of potential punitive personal measures um, in place, it's going to take a lot more than, a, than some fines uh, to persuade tech bosses to change their behaviour and really act proactively to stop this kind of material reaching children. So how will these tech bosses be investigated? So it's all part of, of the bill. So the bill already um, creates offences for failing to share information with Ofcom firstly, but also failing in child safety duties. So the child safety duties are set out in the bill. They're things like uh, content to do with self-harm, pornography, child sexual abuse material. It will already become illegal under the bill for companies to allow children to be served with this kind of material. But the problem at the moment is that the, the liability for that is a corporate one uh, and the fine is a corporate one. And yes, they are potentially large fines, but these companies have enormously deep uh, deep pockets. And we believe, and so do campaigners like the NSPCC and, and in fact the general public, as polling shows, that it's actually individual personal liability, the threat of imprisonment, that is the only thing that is going to persuade tech bosses to change their behaviour. And we've seen that in other industries, in the construction industry, uh, we've seen that in the financial services industry. I was speaking to a former journalist this morning who told me that actually at the end of the day, it's the threat of personal imprisonment imprisonment of personal sanctions uh, that make sure editors keep to uh, keep within the law. So we're just trying to add that additional level of safeguards that will drive the kind of behaviour change that we desperately need to see. Mm, some misogynistic content, and I'm thinking particularly about uh, that generated by Andrew Tate, who has, of course, been in the news a lot lately. Um, he's banned from TikTok, but his material is currently circulated on that platform by other users. So how would this stop that? Well, as I said, the, the provisions in the online safety bill, we have no argument with what they uh, describe as child safety duties. And, you know, some of those details have yet to be written because that will become that will come in the in the secondary legislation. So, for example, self-harm content will be made illegal, but it's yet to be described the kind of material that will fall into that category. And, of course, the other very important thing that the government has introduced recently into the bill um, is age verification on these platforms. So TikTok, WhatsApp, those kind of platforms at the moment, they do have a potential uh, age limit of 13 and over, but we all know that it's very easy for a child to sign up and use those platforms. So the government is going to introduce in this bill, in this bill a duty on those companies to make sure that no child under 13 or 16 or whatever the age limit is can use those platforms. And of course, that will be uh, very important. But 
we need to be very clear in our amendment or, or the amendment that the government is going to propose in response to ours, we are only trying to capture the very the, the most egregious harms to children. So, you know, self-harm material, um, child sexual abuse, because we don't want we're not trying to criminalise all tech bosses who uh, allow, uh, um, you know, certain types of material on their platform. We're really seeking to prevent the kind of appalling long term harms to children uh, that the bill is seeking to prevent. Miriam Cates, Conservative MP. We must leave it there. Good to talk to you. Thanks.